top of my frame. Start with. Like that. But it'd be. Welcome, welcome everyone. Coming to you live from the Atlanta United Fan TV headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Atlanta United Fan TV post-match live show. Welcome in. We have AJ with us tonight. And as usual, I'm Michael Weiss. And we're going to have at least maybe four guests if we're lucky tonight. It's a win. Brings in everybody. So, how'd you feel about the game? Four guests. For four goals. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lovely night for sure. 4-1, and yeah, I mean, it, really, really beautiful goals, uh, at least for three or four of them, uh, three of four of them, but uh, yeah, a really good night for a lot of the fans that went to the stadium as well to cap off a really good Saturday, so yeah, all in all, it's, uh, you know, a playoff clinching win, and yeah, lots of fans are happy with how the new boys are getting along. The wingers are running rampant and just terrorizing uh, oppositions. And CF Montreal, they didn't have answers for it. And mm, I love it. I love that there weren't any answers because we, yeah, we're, I think we're a dark horse in this, uh, in this playoff, uh, in this MLS club playoffs kind of run for a lot of the uh, these teams because we're probably a bogey team like you know we haven't clinched a home playoff spot but I mean I think apparently we still get that by uh, maybe at least uh, not having to play uh, a wild card wild card playoff so and that's like the uh, the new stuff that you know in, in terms of the uh, the playoff structure but uh, you have a quick uh, kind of summary of this, uh, your feelings of this match? Um, yeah, it's it's exactly what I was hoping for. You know, electric performance from all of our star players who are expected to perform in big games and, and when you need to have people step up um, when others are, aren't doing it. It's just, you know, stopgap fill places. It's like something goes down, something goes back up again. It's, you know, it's like the the left hand goes down you get hit with the right like it's just so much just constantly at you and montreal other teams basically very few teams have had an answer to this so far um basically everyone has struggled with dealing with this type of attack um yeah maybe they'll get a couple past us because our defense maybe still needs some work it's also part of the fact that we just play such a high flying you know attack that kind of leaves us a little vulnerable sometimes but Overall, we're just scoring buckets of goals, and it's very hard. I mean, I remember when we weren't doing this, we would maybe score one or two goals a game. Other team, all they had to do was score one or two goals, and they would either win or tie us. And, like, that's not how you win. So, like, scoring four goals, very few teams can keep up with that type of pace. So, mm -hmm. it's like, <laughs> I mean, you score three goals on a team, that's usually enough to bury any team. So, four, though, I mean, very few teams are coming back from that. So when you're at four or five, I mean, it's that that's the kind of like luxury you're wanting to see from your team, that comfort, because we haven't had that in like so long where we, we had like maybe a one goal lead at like two to one and we're just holding on and we're scared. But now it's like, well, three, four goals, is like two goals up at least. And you're like, OK, 
Sure, why not? Score another one. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's my... Uh, like, it's that, that's what it is, and that's exactly what we're saying, I think, is that we're putting te- teams to the sword, and the fact that the likes of Mascara are coming on, and, you know, he's, he's scoring. I mean, he got his sk- second goal ever in his career, but, you know, he is definitely... Uh, he's improving. He's, you know, he's someone that's, uh, you know, I think when you have the bench that we have now, Jamal Tiare, he gets a Montreal player sent off for Dogso. Like, the bench is looking a lot better now. And, yeah, yeah that, uh, you know, that ability to be able to get some results on the road and then win at home and really put teams away. <sighs> Love to see it. Love yeah. to see it. But before we get into the guests and uh, deeper into maybe our favorite goal, because oh, I love this. I love when we have to like choose a favorite goal. Yeah. The best. An embarrassment but, of riches. Exactly. But uh, yes, uh, if you're new around here, remember to subscribe. Smash that like button as well. Uh, also as well, we revamped our Patreon and we've got a lot of fun new tiers. So check it out it's on the description below as well as at patreon.com slash atlutd fan tv some of those things that you can uh kind of really have fun with with us is choosing what's on the wheel of forfeit which we always do at the end of these streams so stick around for those uh it's either you know, some spicy challenges, some music we don't like to listen to, the full gamut. Uh, Red Ass, if you haven't seen it, uh, yeah, you, uh, either of us, possibly, if we, our aim is good enough. Uh, it's a double whammy. Our, either one yeah, of us shows aim. out how bad we are at shooting, or the other one gets hurt. So. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's uh, it's fun either way. And uh, yeah, as well. So, uh, you know, stick around for all the things. We've uh, got a full stream for you. So definitely, you know, stick around to the end. I heard uh, there was a banana at one point. There was a banana tonight. And uh, I really dislike bananas. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I literally went to Publix, got one banana and walked out. No one gave you any weird looks or anything. I just didn't care at that point. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I, I looked right at the cashier and we looked at the banana. <laughs> I paid for it and I walked out. <laughs> All right, Chad, but, uh, is it weird? Does anyone else think it's weird that AJ has a thing about bananas? It's, and it's not texture related, but I'm just asking, good. just asking. Is it just yeah. me who thinks that's weird? Yeah, it's probably the the lowest I ever, uh, really, I guess recently, paid for something on a receipt, <laughs> like twenty one cents, which is actually a lot for a banana. Actually, no, it is. That's inflation for you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let's get our first guest in here and let's get their thoughts. All right, let me just shoot a message. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so in the meantime. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a match that, like, that first half, we dominated pretty thoroughly. It was like 70 to 30 possession. Uh, our pass accuracy was like something like 90% for the entire match. And, uh, you know, it's quite good. Quite good in, uh, in a lot of respects. But, yeah, that, that black mark is conceding that goal in the first half, which, yeah, if they got punched us a second time, might have been a different story in that that uh, first half, even though they were thoroughly outplayed. But welcome, Drew. And uh, yeah, we uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts, man. Oh, it was a great game tonight. Honestly, from start to finish, it looked we dominated the entire game, and it was great to see from start to finish, from the subs coming on to the starting lineup, just dominating the entire game which I can't say I've seen for most of the season. It's probably the best I've seen of this team. I thought the Miami game was good, but then 
this one shows out even more. So it's good. It's great to see going into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's probably helped because uh, the starting eleven we probably had the strongest eleven uh, with Sean De Silva and Saba Lapsenite, uh both starting, and those wings looked deadly, didn't they? Yes. Silva balled out tonight. He was dangerous every time he touched the ball. It was he caused terror to that back line and forced uh, Montreal into an early substitution to try to deal with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. George Campbell, uh, you know, our former homegrown, he, uh, he is unfortunately the guy that uh, is axed at the half. Uh, It's it's rough. I mean, going up against Silva was, that was rough. Yeah, exactly. He, he got eaten up, but uh, there was something interesting. I mean, at the end of the match, Tiago Amada and George Campbell were deep in conversation, uh, but George Campbell was wearing a hoodie. It's it just seems a little strange that he's you know not in at least some sort of like uh, he just had an early shower, I guess, obviously. But uh, made me wonder uh, if Tiago Amada. He was asking if he was like I was reading some lips. Uh, obviously, I don't know t- how much English Tiago Amada can speak, but. It seemed like he was talking about, are you okay? You know, and so it was like interesting if he was taken off for injury reason or if it was actually, you know, I I know they were also talking before the game and it it looked like it was deep conversation as well. So I'm wondering about that. Maybe if he's not too happy at Montreal or or something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Which, uh, I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, uh, I peeped his, uh, George Campbell's IG story today, and uh, he was like, game day, he had the blue heart and the white heart. Seems like, I mean, maybe at least on the outset. <laughs> Marketing the team outset, grabbed his phone and were like, here, we're contractually obligated. To exactly, write right. Yeah, exactly. But, but anyway, uh, yeah, in terms of your favorite goal, was there a favorite goal? comes down to either the Tiago one or the uh, Mascara one because you had basic perfect team play for the Yamada one you were connecting one two touch passes all all the way to the goal and then for the Mascara one Wolf hits a perfect cross field cross and lays it on a plate for a perfect counter and Tiago sets up Mascara for an open goal and perfect, perfect goal. I'd probably go yeah, with the mascara one, honestly. Yeah, a little bit of a deflection, but yeah, I mean the the build up on both, incredible. Like that's that's what we want to see is uh, yeah, you know the combination play between all the players because that's really what's really unstoppable. The the wonder goals, the hero ball, like that's unsustainable. And but. <laughs> Is it though? Yorgos Yakumakis, he's now tied for the Golden Boot again, and with a ridiculous chip from distance, it's just almost uh, got ruled off. But uh, yeah, VAR and the center ref came to their senses, which is yep. fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, we get a lot of calls yeah. going our way lately, and I like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Maybe it's the pressure from, uh, you know, the home crowd. I mean, but. You know, it's uh, it's lovely. It's uh, <laughs> I, I'd much rather that than uh, you know, be pissed at the ref and yeah. you know, also boo them out. Be lucky than good. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah. So three stars of this match. Where do you go? Oh, uh, Silva, first star. No, hands down, the best player on the pitch tonight. He was terrorizing the back line from start to finish and then Almada a great bounce back game after basically being invisible versus DC um and then I'll probably give it to Yakumakis got his goal stays in the race for the golden boot and it's gonna be a race to the finish there yeah I mean yeah we I think yeah it's the Embarrassment of riches, 
like uh, you know, like uh, uh, Michael was saying, it's a little bit where, yeah, I mean, does it hurt Thiago Amato's MVP case? Because, yeah, Hani Mukhtar, yeah, it's like those stats are ridiculous. He's he's a video game player essentially, but it's uh, it's one of those things. It's like okay, I mean, you know, double digits in both Almada. Uh, if we can finish higher, you know, possibly. So, I mean, do you think, bias aside, Almada can win MVP, or should it be Mukhtar? I think he still has a shot, honestly. With the last four games, if he can drag this team into getting a top four spot, it makes his case a lot better. And if he can put in a goal or two and maybe two assists, it looks it's very hard to challenge that then. Mm -hmm. I think he is the assist leader in the league. So there is that too. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and he's not, you know, a striker per se, although, you know, Hani Mukhtar, it's, it's hard to say with him. I mean, he's, I think he's more of a center forward, but either way, yeah, no, it's a, it's a good shout. I think, uh, hopefully we can, uh, another MVP in tow for LA United would be, mm, would be capping off this, uh, this season in which, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. Let's be honest. Yeah, we had to salvage yeah. this season. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, any final thoughts on this match? No, it's just great game to from start to finish. Hope to see us get a home playoffs uh, seed here, and I'm looking forward to showing up in the playoffs now with the clinch playoff spot tonight. All right, indeed, before indeed. I let you go, here's a hot question for you: Golden Boot, mm -hmm. should it include penalty kicks or not? Just pure goals. I got to go with yes, it should include because mm -hmm. they are goals. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair. Yeah. yeah. Because it's this, I mean, uh, <laughs> if we go by that logic, though, I mean, uh, Harry Kane probably would not have won as many golden boots. Yep. 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 And, uh, hey, just because we uh, were wrong for forever doesn't mean we cannot now be right. <laughs> yeah, it was true. But no, I mean, I. Uh, can we make it retroactive then? Because uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it have to be a different. It have to be like a different thing, different metric. Yeah. Or reward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't dislike it when it involves uh, Tottenham not getting it's something. It's like all, all said, it's just far more impressive what Yorgos has done versus what Hani has done this year, just because oh, like, half sure. of Hani's goals are like pen penalties. So, uh, you know. His goal rate is just ridiculous, and I think it's also, yeah, <laughs> if he could stay on the pitch, which uh, yeah, thankfully he didn't get a yellow tonight, uh, somehow. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and so it's one of those like, yeah, lovely. Okay, uh, what is the match that he's gonna get the yellow, yeah. and which and game why is, he is it gonna be Philadelphia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. I mean. I have, oh man, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a decision day where he misses it because, yeah. Please just somehow no. it's going to be that. I know, right? And, like, thankfully, thankfully, I think we're in a playoff spot already, but it's like, we got to we gotta get that home yeah. playoff spot, like, <laughs> cinched. Yeah. Like, very soon. Yeah, exactly. But, anyway. Uh, Drew, thank you so much. Pleasure as always. And no we'll speak problem. to you. Thanks. Yep. See you guys. Yep. Take care. All right. And we're going to be moving to our next guest shortly. Well, let's, before we do that, yes, yeah. let's get into the chat. All right. Let's do a little bit of, well, let's see what, wow. Okay. A lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of things. Um, Atlanta in fourth now, they beat him to I mean, fifth. <laughs> wow. We jumped up to fourth all of a sudden. Um, it just feels good about this team. So many teams with the same amount of points in the East. I know, it's crazy. Jack Dickens says, Silva is so good. I was thinking, hypothetically, imagine if we had this squad from the start of the season. Where would we be? I would say top four in the East for sure. Um, Elliot says, I love bananas. Uh, Brands World Gaming HD says, I guess tonight's win answered my question for the, from the mailbox. Uh, Connor Thompson oh, said, we in. 
Also, we tied for most team goals in MLS, by the way. Us in Columbus. M. Le M Level 10 says, Rosetto looks like a different player. Uh, Elliot Beaven says, Gigi's goal was my favorite in that match. Uh, Danta says, let's go, we in the playoffs. Elliot says, Atlanta going, be uh, going second in the standings is a possibility, but needs some luck along the way. Donda also says, we may... We made it without Tata and Joseph Martinez. Um, they also say Braves and United FC both in playoffs. If both Braves and United win, it'll be historical for Atlanta. Um, yep. Yeah. And so we now have with us the one and only Niall. How are you doing, Niall? I'm good. How about you all? <laughs> Fantastic after a win, especially. Lovely. Lovely. What are your yeah. thoughts on this game? Um, it was a fun game for sure. I think this one of the things that I've been noticing through the past couple of games is that this team is really fun to watch. Um, just the way they play, they have a certain swagger that I think we came to love from the team at the beginning. And we kind of have that swagger back in a sense. The new signings have really transformed the team. Silva, Shande, Yumba, all three of them. Um, I, th I thought it was a good game today. The first half was pretty good for us. Second half kind of died down a bit at the beginning, but towards towards the end, we kind of got our groove back, especially after uh, <laughs> the red card from Montreal. Um, but I thought, it w I thought it was a good game all around, and, and it's not nice to be back in the playoffs especially since we haven't been in the playoffs since two years ago now so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah it's a it's a weird feeling to have not been in the playoffs and now it's like yeah we it's like the the back again feeling but it it, it just feels strange that uh that we were out of the playoffs for two years actually like it it didn't feel like it, but it also, obviously, it did happen. But, yeah. No. Exactly. Right. It's just like, yo, like, what were those two years that, why were, uh, like, why do I, like, I blocked out, obviously, some of that. Because it's just, yeah, those were dire. And I think, yeah, you see kind of the fandom coming back a little bit. Uh, it's, you know, like how people are going to say, it's like, oh, I've always been here, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, the, the casuals fell off. And, you know, I mean, that's that's pretty obvious. Exactly, exactly. But uh, yeah, in terms of your favorite goal, did you have one? Oh, I'm going to say I like the second goal a lot just because the way... Silva kind of just made the, the keeper look look stupid in the entire defense, honestly, and then just kind of set up Amada for a platter. That was probably my favorite. I The Gigi goal was also good as well, but I wasn't able to fully catch that one, so I'd say the second goal for me was my favorite. Mm. Are you partying too hard, man? Like, what, what's going on? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I was I was I was getting food when the when the third goal happened, so I wasn't oh, able to. Food. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. <laughs> no, but uh, in terms of uh, the man of the match, then who uh, who was that for you? Oof. I'm gonna say Silva. He was just causing problems throughout the, the night. He looked, he made Campbell look pretty pretty silly to the point that he had to be <laughs> subbed off at the half, which is pretty interesting. Um, and he, I don't know, he just just looks like the player um i would really hope that we actually sign him uh once his loan expires because for me he's he just it's he has something that this team's lacked in the past and he's just he's very he's simple but he's effective and that, and that's the thing for me that that makes him like very much a, a, a dangerous player is that he's really really pretty much often going at the defense and cutting from inside and and he's just always like always an outlet and he's creating and he's scoring goals and then that's all you can really ask for yeah 
I mean, that's a great point. It's like he's direct. He is like causing chaos. He's up, he's been unplayable. I mean, just anytime he's been on the pitch, it's like just everything. He's doing everything, and uh, as well, like tracking back defensively a little bit too. So, yeah, I mean, he he looks a player, and it's yeah, it's some sexy stuff too, because it's not just like I. It really like shows how far we've come a little bit. Uh, I think we look a much more dangerous team than even some of the other teams that were uh, maybe higher in the playoffs. But like when P.T. Martinez, Ezekiel Barco, like th- just the similarities in their play, just how it clogged up kind of our machine, our system. But yeah, these guys, because they're staying wide, it's just like really spreading the team that they're playing really thin. And yeah, as many times as they try to take on guys one-on-one, it's just like, yeah, like George Campbell. I mean, he, he probably lost some, uh, some future salary. From this. He got <laughs> cut up a bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, he, he probably, he's got some like retribution that he's got to figure out in the future to make sure that yeah he can continue to be in this league because yikes <laughs> like it it was not pretty and i feel bad for him because i mean yeah. he's still a young defender he's still uh getting his bearings for a center back he's really young but yeah like that's can't can't be happening too often but uh Niall, three stars what you got uh, Wiley, I think was one of them. Wiley, for me, mm. just continues to impress. I thought that he was pretty decent defensively. It's just, I don't know. It's just every time I, I I watch him play, he just continues to to grow game after game, and that's yeah, very that's just very convincing from him. Especially since there, I remember times in the past where he kind of was still lacking in that aspect but he's a lot i feel like he's developed quite a bit which is exciting um i'm gonna say almada too he had a a good game set a lot of the goals came from from his play obviously um looked a bit tired towards the end but i i guess like that's kind of expected knowing the amount of games he's played um and then i'll say silva of course based on what i've said earlier yeah, and Caleb Wiley, that's a great show. Uh, he's got his 53rd appearance, like tops for a homegrown. And yeah, he's looked more defensively stout. I mean, let's really like call it out where, you know, Gutman, a really good player, but <laughs> Wiley, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty like pointed. Yeah. He's a much better defender than mm-hmm. Gutman. And his got attacking is is nothing to you know sniff at i mean that the yeah. amount of times he just took the ball saw space i can't tell you how much if you watch soccer with me you know that i yell at the tv when there's space for someone to take and they don't take it and it's they just you know pass sideways laterally or backwards or whatever just just go and this time caleb went every time and i love mm-hmm. to see it oh yeah yeah that direct play from him uh yeah there was uh, yeah, a few of them, but like one in particular that's I remember that yeah he took a couple guys on, beat them, uh, passed in a pretty good ball, uh, square ball, but still I think he found Tiago Almada and yeah it was just yeah that's something that like he he's got a bulldog in him he's got a, like a he's got a lot of fight too which like has been really interesting to see he's not. He's not a pushover at all. Like at 18 years old, he is like he's a man. Like he's not, he's not a he's not the, a kid playing out there. He's a guy that's like, if there's a you know a player on the opposition that is giving him guff, like he's talking back to him. He's, you know, he's getting stuck in. It's really good to see. And I don't know how long we will have Caleb Wiley. Like if he keeps at this pace, because yeah, he's got some some ability that's for sure, and I'm sure there will be some teams in Europe that will be calling very soon. Oh yeah, but oh yeah, yeah. easily. It's gonna be yeah. tough to keep your our hands on him. Yeah, mm. but uh, 
yeah i mean it might be a year more who knows i don't know but yeah man that's uh I think he doesn't make the same mistake that that Bella did in terms of moving, moving too early. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Because yeah, he, he wasn't fully developed, and th that's what you can tell. And it's also that like defensively, George Bello, yeah, leaves a lot to be desired. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, uh, final thoughts on this match? Uh, just a good match. This was a match that he needed to win, and he did. The schedule's gonna get pretty tough from now, from here on out. You play, I think Philly next, which is always always fun, <laughs> always a crapshoot when we go up there and play them. So that will be, so that will be interesting. And then you play Columbus at home on the last on the last day, which I I think would would be interesting, especially if you know I I wouldn't put. I'm not saying that Atlanta will win, but I wouldn't put it past Atlanta to maybe surprise some people on, on decision day. So, but we'll see what happens. But I, it's since for sure it's gonna day, be, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, thank you, Niall. Thanks so much as always. Have a great rest of your night, and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks, buddy. All right, thank you guys. Night, night. <laughs> All right, and next we have uh, Glenn from the Five Takes on the Five Stripes. He's going to come and join us in a minute. Um, let's get to that so, chat. Yeah, let's take a look at the chat. What are we saying tonight, everybody? Um, uh, Drew also says, Rosie looks like a... Look, I can read tonight, I promise. Rosie looks like such a different player now that he actually has a role that he fits his play style. Yeah, agree. I mean, like we've talked about in the past, um, like we talked about in the past, the Saba Silva Tristan effect is here and pronounced. It's making everyone better. I mean, if you can make Edwin score multiple goals, I mean, it's it's incredible. So here we are. It's, uh, it's literally doubled. Uh, well, uh more than doubled his output in his career yes so, incredible but uh yeah the the other aspect is yeah on Hosetu, it is so interesting because yeah i think it's allowed him to have more space to operate because now the teams are more spread out and so he is a player that's yeah, he needs more space to be able to to play. Obviously, he is very good in the respect of uh, being on the ball and being able to uh, navigate, you know, a uh, pressing team that is pressing him tightly, uh, marking him tightly. But, yeah, no, he, he, he had a shot as well in this match. It's like, okay, wow, okay, there's that too. You know, like, it wasn't the best shot, but... You know, he's being more aggressive now. So, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But, yeah. Glenn, welcome in. Let us have your thoughts. What up, boys? Uh, that was nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the treat. Golly, um, man, this team is different. <laughs> this team is all the way, all the, all oh, the way different. Um, the, the the front office is... is they've hit it out of the park with this uh with this window um they gotta give them a lot of credit because boy they were facing a lot of a lot of criticism a lot of flack myself included you know uh when ibarra moves on and vibes are less than ideal mm -hmm. and um with carlos you know the whole staff told us um wait mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we have a plan <laughs> <laughs> to you now yeah okay it doesn't really seem like it um all right uh they, they may have had a plan uh it's working pretty well so far um incredible it, it's just incredible what this team has done uh in such a short span of time I, I can't remember a time in this in this club's history where such big changes were made in such a short period of time and it's come right so quickly yeah it's been two months what the hell um yeah it, it feels like um the team we were watching prior to was like a couple seasons 
you know, and, and, it, and it has been. I mean, I'm not like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, yeah, I don't know. Time's a flat circle. This makes no sense how, how, how good this has become. Tonight was a, it's, it's amazing what, like, a, a elite treat. wingers will give you, you know? Right. Yeah, it's a bit of that. I mean, and how? Go ahead. Go, 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 shoot. Yeah, I was about to say, it's like, yeah, you know, in terms of maybe what we're used to in terms of a betting in period, we're used to Ezekiel Barco, PT Martinez taking like a year. Yeah. Two years to really get acclimated. A lot of pundits are like, well, listen, they have to get their families here. They have to, you know, learn the language and the That's culture fair. and understand. And I'm like, and when, and me, like, being a, a new Atlanta United fan and, like, down 18 or, and then going on, it's like, okay, that sounds reasonable. And then when these players came in and just hit the ground running, you're like, wait, hold on. Have I been sold a bill of sale that wasn't exactly accurate? <laughs> um, yeah. It's levels. It's levels, probably, obviously, with mm-hmm. South America. South America and Europe, like, yeah, there's, you know, differences in ability and I think readiness and what they've seen. Like, their experience really matters, I think, here. Because, yeah, you know, they've been part of teams that clearly uh, there's differences in play that they can draw experience from. And, yeah, just the, the classy touches from these wingers is really, like, spreading the team that we're playing against so thin and that's the beauty of it like that's how you destroy teams but uh glenn yeah did you have a favorite goal from uh i think the second one yeah um it's gotta be it's it has to be um you know it, it comes off of y'all remember when cast your minds back to forever ago two and a half months i know a long time ago I barely remember what I had for lunch, even Glenn, you're really <laughs> kind of straining me here. <laughs> I know. I'm, a- I'm asking a lot. Um, or even just the past few seasons, post-19, um, where at least my big frustration is that um, we would occasionally win a duel uh, in midfield. We'd win a 1v1 battle, right? We'd get the ball back, and that would be enough. Well done. We've won the ball. We pass backwards. Pass laterally. Now, we're looking at these 1v1 opportunities, um, especially off of like counter pressures. We lose the ball, five second roll, win it back. Win a duel in midfield, boom. They're, they're, they're unbalanced, go. Yeah. Go to goal. If it doesn't come off and you don't score, okay, you gave him something to think about. That's where this goal comes from. Like a, a few, most of our top attacking opportunities and goals came from like, first win the duel and go. Yeah, we win. Good things happen. Um, I mean, it, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, we were learning to be say, a you know, hitting on transition team, keeper. too. Yeah, um, just something that's fundamental to, to a certain extent, but we just, we just weren't we're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're doing it now. Um, it's, it's beautiful to see. That has to be my favorite. I mean, I love a good chip. I love a good chip of the keeper. I love clowning the keeper. Mm-hmm. Um, from my vantage point on that Yorgo school, I was really confused about the offside thing because it looked like he did all the work, like he won the ball. Turns out John Day won, won the ball, and, and Yorgos was in an offside position, but it, it comes off the defender, it's, and it's all good. Um, but I was so confused at first because I'm like, didn't Yorgos do all that work? How in the world are they calling... Who are they calling off offside here? Um, but I, I get that now. But I still think the second one's got to be my favorite. Good goal. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. For me. And uh, to your point here about uh, not only being more direct and yeah, you know, definitely, I think it's this: we are starting out of the blocks a lot quicker, and that reason why we're playing a lot quicker is because we're being more direct we're playing over the top early we're not trying to pass them to death from the back first we're changing it up and i think that's that's beautiful that that's how yeah. you you catch teams off guard early yeah because yeah you sucker punch them in the face and then comes the right hook 
and then you know other stuff as yeah. well but the uh the uh announcer on apple tv i don't know who the guy was was saying how Atlanta united can hurt you in so many different ways um and this is you know kind of an example of that i mean the the fact that we can do the build up play and unwind teams that way the fact that we can hit and transition and hurt you that way the fact that we can just do balls over the top and go crazy we can hurt you that way like teams don't know how to defend all of that right. they can't put all their eggs in one basket like they typically used to playing against land united and it's interesting to see that everyone's playbook on how to play the last two or three years of land united they're starting to have to realize they need to throw it into the garbage because they need to go back to the drawing board it's yeah i they... love how on we're keeping teams unbalanced man Using yeah. the full the full pitch, left, right, and center. It's what we didn't do in DC yet, and I couldn't understand that. But away games are hard. Um, DC's pitch is terrible. But th they played tonight. They in, did. A, in a tropical storm. Wow. Yeah. Braves said, "No, nah, fuck that. We we ain't playing." I get it. Baseball, soccer, different. But yeah. my lord, <laughs> grief, guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what the score was was I'll check one. it. I'll check it real quick. Anyone seen? But I saw the rain. I'm I'm sure saw it was that. Something. I'm sure it was yeah. something oh my god! Crazy. Oh Christ! Five yeah. three Red Bulls. <laughs> wow. wow! Holy hell! I mean, which, I mean, I'm sure it was defense <laughs> tonight. It was just like let's just survive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Probably but, uh, it was probably like do y'all remember the Columbus match we had where you couldn't put the ball on the ground? You literally yeah. had to just keep hoping it because it wouldn't roll in the grass. It, yeah. was it was just floating. It was floating. It was, it was in a pool that. basically. Yeah, it was just floating. Yeah, it was yeah. water polo. It was ridiculous. It was probably something like that. Um <laughs> But uh yeah, in terms of uh yeah, your three stars. What do you got? It's gotta be Mr. 9.0 Zonde Silva. Um uh, Sofa score and Fat Mob have him at a, a nine. Give the man a ten. Give the man a ten. It's, I guess because uh, he did something, but I mean, come on. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, gotta go, Caleb. Just because what y'all talked about earlier. Oh, yeah. Most homegrown matches, and the boy is a man. And uh, Europe will come calling at some point. I think we'll hang on to him for a bit longer. Um. His development has been has been just a joy to, to watch the player he's become and how how meaningful he is for us. I mean, he had a hand in a bunch of the goals. I mean, not directly, but you know, starting the build up of getting the attack going, winning a duel, uh, taking the ball out of an air. He's just he's very composed, very mature for his age. Kid's a kid. Ridiculous. <laughs> what what's I can't going on here? Do that with him. Yeah. I was uh, um, underdeveloped. Uh, definitely dumb and <laughs> just Dude, not. I'm underdeveloped. I'm I'm 40 and I'm not even developed as much as he is. Kid's incredible. Exactly. Um, yeah, then, he came from the off and season. I, I think... with, like a ridiculous, like a different person. Like he had the, a little bit of that mustache. I was like, who? It, wait, oh, that's Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, let's see, that's two. Uh, third one, this one's for you, AJ. Go on, Mascara. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. Hear me out on this one. Um, okay. World-class baller? No. At, at the level of, like, where, where Jande, Moyamba, um, Saba, and I think Jamal's going to be pretty good. Um, he, I mean, his first contribution is getting a player sent off, so well done um i th i think mascara deserves a, a a little bit of of credit uh because and i'll throw i'll throw my hand up in the air on this one too um took a lot of heat a lot of criticism a lot of doubt <laughs> guilty um he's been through it came in last season in a difficult moment and he had a lot of time season did not end well he gets loaned out club says nah we don't want you comes back another difficult moment and uh, surrounded by doubt self-doubt and you know as a player you just gotta lock that out and do the business and he's, he's done the business uh i think he's done more than just with the goal tonight i don't think he's been like 
crap and then you know just gets a sitter and we're all singing his praises i don't think that's been the case with with edwin mm-hmm. kind of like it hasn't been like what what barry had where he had one golasso and that's it for me he just hasn't had many other meaningful contributions to, to this team and i think edwin has so i gotta give him a lot of credit uh for that i hope he carries on I'm not sure if he'll he'll be staying with the team in this new composition who we signed uh in the off season uh please lord sign sunday just even if it's dp level um silva deep silva here yeah so I uh, yeah those those are those are my three I know you could easily go with all so of them. I, I'll say though that like I I have been hard on Edwin um and I, f- I feel deservedly so um however I will say he has one quality that has very much impressed me that a DP signing of ours recently has not Aruju did not have the ability to block out all of the self doubt and all of the criticism. It let it, he let it get to him, and he was not able to produce, um, and he had to functionally leave from that. Whereas Edwin's like, you know what? Okay, uh, yeah. new environment comes in, and I can not let it get it to me, and continue on. And he started flourishing. So that's that's a great uh, level of resiliency that we haven't seen, and maybe I dare say maturity in a, in a younger player. So that's yeah. pretty cool. I think that's a really good shout. <laughs> He does have that ability, and Araujo did not. Um, and Araujo, truthfully, is, you know, apples to apples, probably the more skilled player, technically. Mm-hmm. All, the, all the good that did him. Yeah. It's about what you can do on, on the day. Um, yeah. I think that's what it is. Really yeah, Mosquera is also more of a team player. Mm-hmm. And. He knows his role, I think, in the team, you know, and so his ability to beat people uh, with, you know, his pace, I think that's what he knows he's good at that. And he he's using that his advantage and then not lingering on the ball, you know, not trying to play hero ball. He is getting rid of it quickly. You know, he knows. OK, yeah, if Almada is near. Exactly. It's like if Almada is near, give him the ball. And he'll make things happen <laughs> like a certain other diminutive Argentine uh, playmaker. Uh, yeah, he will find you. And that's what it is. Like, that's how Mosquera has been scoring is pretty much near the six, eight yard box. And yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, it's not like crazy golazos, but yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, you don't need to. Yeah. Eight you don't. Player. Simple play, no hero ball. Luis did. Luis, Luis is confounding. Could have been all that and just didn't get right. Yeah. Yeah. Never understood it. Yeah, it's yeah. confusing. It's it's something we'll never understand, I'm sure. But uh, uh, another thing I thought about just now, maybe there's two levels of praise for Edwin. I know I'm like coming full circle on him, but I wow. will say that that. One, one other thing, one other thing that he's able to do that someone else was toted to be able yeah. to do and was not able to, Jurgen Dam was supposed to be incredibly fast. Mm-hmm. Edwin's speed seems to be used far more effectively than Jurgen's speed ever did. Jurgen, yeah, got open and got Effective down, but for speed. whatever reason, Edwin's speed seems to me, yeah, he can do this, like a similar kind of pace, but there seems to be more product, there seems to be more danger on the end of it. Jurgens just never seemed to get there. Effective mm-hmm. pace can make you seem faster than you. That's play. that's where I'm Effective at. Effective speed and when to go. That is messy 101. Mm-hmm. Effective. Boy, Edwin and Messi in the ground. same sentence. Where this is a whole. <laughs> is know. this a strange episode? It's a whole Ooh. goat conversation. Yeah. Um, there's room on the farm for an extra goat. Come on, Edwin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I like that. I mean, you're, you're not wrong on you're not wrong on any of that. He, he uses his pace to great uh, greater uh, effect than someone else that was very fast and just didn't do a whole lot with it. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit just more predictable obviously with Dom that what he was going to do yeah he was going to get to the byline and he was going to put a cross in that 
may or may not have found anybody. And yeah, it's just like, there's no variance in it. It's usually more of a kind of aerial type of, you know, ball. Uh, so it's just like, Mascara, you kind of don't know what exactly he's going to do with each, you know, play that that's, that's the beauty of it. That's, that's how you unsettle teams. That's how you unlock defenses. Multiple arrows in the quiver, baby. All right, Glenn, exactly. if you have your final thoughts. Um, it just feels good to be entertained again. That's it. That, that sums up everything. We're having fun. Yeah. Um, we are. Somehow we have now become Akil FC. <laughs> We're trying tricks and flicks. Yes. Two, three, four, five times every match. Where When's uh, the last time? Uh-huh. We had that kind of swagger, confidence. Uh, we were just struggling to just hold on to the ball. Uh-huh. Now we doing this? Yeah. Well, yeah, more. in the first half. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? In the first yeah. half, we're like, ow, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. there were some fans I mean... around me that were like, oh, like, but then they worked hard to get it back when they lost it. Like, yeah, the back heel didn't come off, but... They worked hard to get it back, and then they moved forward with it immediately. So it was just like, eh. Like, I don't mind it if you're trying shit. Like, that's yeah. you know, <laughs> that's how you break down teams, by being unpredictable. So. Absolutely. We'll need well, to be a little pragmatic when it gets into the knockout yeah. rounds, which is fine. Yes. We did that in 2018. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it'd, be, it'd be great if we do end up in fourth. I know. Games in hands. Other but it's yep. we got some six pointers coming up where yeah uh, we can make a real push for that but if we can get home field take care of whoever we got to take care of and give me one knockout round thing mm-hmm. i'm gonna call this a successful scene. oh it's gonna be oh, i know I, I i know we want more than that but i'm not saying i'd be satisfied like i want, I want everything but I think I would look back on it and go, that's that's pretty good. That's in the right direction. And um, we'll do our best to beat Miami uh, next next season. Yes. That's what my head's at. That's my love. Yeah. And I, I think that yeah, you're right. If, if we get a home playoff spot, that was the goal that they had set forth. So, okay. Uh, you know, that is a successful season in terms of the – outward goals that they yeah exactly so hopefully so but glenn pleasure as always Mm -hmm. and yeah take care buddy good see ya all right and we will have one more guest tonight but until then let me just check out the chat Uh what do we got going on Oh, my buddy Ellie copped in and said, "Looks like I missed another good one." Well, you gotta got you gotta watch these games, man. I'm telling uh-huh. you, I'm telling you, yep. it's uh, there's some good ones, and I gotta get you on, I gotta get you on the uh, the podcast one of these days. You you said you know, you said you owe me, so you're gonna be on there one time. That and we'll play some <laughs> soccer again soon. Coming off of being sick, so that's why I haven't been able to. Um, and a new good to see you in the chat there, buddy. I was just comparing mascara to Dom the other day. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I think we have a superior thing there. Um, and Gavin says Arujo had just had to be one of the most confusing players in our history for whether uh, he's good or bad, whether or not he's good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. And J Mag says same here. I missed a good match apparently. Hello, gentlemen. Hello, hello. It sounds good. Um, all right, and now we have Gavin joining us. Gavin, is your yes, it is your get your your camera's on. All right, how you doing? Hey. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Doing fantastic, fan fucking tastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What uh, what were your thoughts on this match? All right. Uh, so, so the so um, be on the phone. I'm extremely glad we made the. I'm extremely glad we made the playoffs tonight. That would have been the number the number the number one thing that I'm happy about tonight because we, we made the playoffs and that's like the biggest accomplishment this season so far. Because 
we're not the team that we were in 2019 when we won like trophies like Champions Cup, US Open Cup. We made the playoffs, now we got to go for MLS Cup. But uh, I, this was an overall dominating performance as I expected. And I also got the score as like I got it, I predicted 4 1 and I was right because I commented on the Instagram page. You gotta um, go I to think... uh, to uh, the casinos after this. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I need to start making those bets, and I'll just be filthy rich. Yeah. You know I mean, but yeah, I think we have a bright future ahead of ourselves. But I still think there's a ton of work to do as we should fight for a higher spot. But I also think Yako should purpose to the yellow before the playoffs start sometime because we'll definitely need him. But but yeah, I, I was I was watching um I was watching some American football with family and this match at the same time so i wasn't completely sold into this match but i still saw the goals i still saw the red card i still saw everything. so what was your favorite goal then <clears throat> favorite goal uh probably uh Alma- almada's goal although it had to have been like silva who created it right it, rem- it reminds me that was of the uh, second one yeah 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 second one yeah second goal uh two and nil um it reminds me of the. Do you guys remember that one goal that Moreno, um, Moreno created and t- gave it to George Bello? That was against DC, I think. That's what it reminds me of a little bit. Because it's like. It's like you're creating a good. Like. Because in 2021, Bello had a goal. The, it was like a goal of the week contender. It made no sense to me because it was just a tap in, although it was only created by Moreno. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not saying this is a goal of the week contender, but that's just what it reminds me of. So mm-hmm. it was a. It was a good finish by Almada. Yeah. But that was definitely my favorite goal. Yeah, we, we pretty much agree. I mean, it's like that team goal. I mean, it's the, the fact that, like, we can work a team like that and get them, like, you know, their heads on a swivel and we're just dancing around them. I mean, that that ability to, like, look down, look up, put that ball back to Almada from Silva, like, that was world class. That's amazing stuff right there. I was like every game if we could do this every game i mean you know me about cutback passes i love to see us do cutback passes passes and i hate it when they're used against us so like when i saw that happening i'm like yes finally i have like a little bit as long as it goes at least a little bit backwards it just breaks mls teams if any if a ball like ever in the attacking motion somehow decides to go backwards it just breaks mls defense like if it's a back heel oh forget about it everyone their brains just explode and if you cut back everyone just kind of goes off on vacation for five seconds and bang guy blasted in so i'm glad we're starting to do those types of things and man we did like a couple of like uh glenn was talking about little heel flicks and all kinds of crazy tricks tonight i was thinking yako was trying to score in every which possible part of his foot he could use like it was Literally. some crazy like a, like the outside he's inside the tip the peel. i'm like where what is this going on with this guy mm-hmm. he's gonna he's gonna use his uh his hip to score one time and it's just gonna be amazing it's gonna he's gonna do a, a butt flick yeah and it's gonna be <laughs> he's gonna do something that kubo torres couldn't do <laughs> well, he could do a lot of things that Kubo Torres can do. That's, uh, His whole body's a weapon at this point. It's yeah, exactly, exactly. it's amazing. Yeah, and also as well, like that that lead up to the second goal, uh, it was Caleb Wiley that found Silva in the box, and yeah, it was yeah, uh, just <laughs> so much good stuff. So much good stuff in that goal. It's just yeah, there's a dummy in one of the other goals that was. Almada like, dummies, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just like we we played with some some swagger, some yeah. Nash. And if like, I remember, there was at least like at least one opportunity where there could have been another like just pearlescent uh, team goal again. Uh, oh, that, oh. Like we we had a situation where I was just like, oh, it's like dinging up around like three different guys in the box. And it looks so pretty if they, but they just couldn't get it in the goal. And I'm like, that could have been another just excellent example. <laughs> I mean, someone's been studying Ray Hudson or something because uh... yeah, the superlatives. You gotta watch for the superlatives. Oh man, no, you, you you got like a synonym book or something, man. Like I, I think I need to borrow it. I think it's called uh... a thesaurus. Yeah, that's true. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I called it literally a synonym book. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's late, to be fair. But <laughs> I know what a thesaurus is. 
But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So in terms of a uh, yeah, the three stars. What do you go? Three stars. Uh, for me, it's hard to tell, but I got one of them is Saba, uh, Silva, and probably Almada. But I could keep going on because overall, I think everyone did a phenomenal job tonight. If you're going up against a Montreal team like the one tonight, I think anyone could get involved in a top insert number here. Players of the game. Like, I, it was a team game. Like, even, like, Adam John wasn't even playing. He'd be the player of the game, too. Oh, damn. Ooh. I mean, th this isn't a terrible Montreal side. They're they're clinging on to that ninth spot, so to be fair. But, uh, yeah, no, I, they just didn't have it tonight. Like, they didn't have the answers for what we were asking and we were asking a lot of questions and yeah they they yeah as well it's like on the ball they just didn't have solutions but as well i noticed and it, it's something that i'll be curious to see in the future how teams are playing us is if because they pretty much were doing a mid block in which case, yeah, they really like scrunched up the space. So essentially, they incrementally were being pushed back further and further. But I feel like more teams will probably try to sit deep against us, knowing how deadly we are on the counter, and instead just frustrate us. And that is probably the next step in seeing how we, we counteract that. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah, there's, it's, it's the thing that the the top teams have to deal with. That's why it was sometimes very frustrating in 2018 and 2019 because teams were just sitting so so deep against us. Uh, I remember that like Sporting KC match, the Seattle Sounders match at home, where basically we had no choice but to lump in crosses, and they. You know, we're able to get results here. Uh, but, you know, I think uh, that's for another day. Yeah. We'll cross that bridge when we actually uh, encounter that. But I think, yeah, Montreal probably also had the wrong game plan. They, uh, I don't know exactly what they were trying to do, but yeah, the mid block didn't work. And uh, <laughs> it just allowed us so much space in behind. It was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, the ball is always on. I mean, that always used to be, like I said earlier, that used to be the book on us. Is we Elena has no midfield, abuse their midfield, mid block them, and guess what? We have a midfield now, so wake up. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's just like we'll play the early balls, we'll play the ball in behind, we'll through ball you, like yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, uh, any final thoughts on this match? Uh, I got a few. Uh, here's my man of the match. Uh, it Again, it could be anyone for me, but uh, probably Silva. I feel like it's a toss-up between him and Saba, though, because I love how they've been playing and creating uh, all chances, especially on the counter as of late. Um, this is also a question that I can't seem to solve myself. Um, do you guys think we can pull a positive result in Philly? Because I, I get we've been on a pretty damn great form as of late, but it's Philly in philly and it's an extremely hard place to play we can get a draw i don't know if we can win but yeah. we can get a draw yeah it'll, it'll depend on how we we set up our midfield and uh if <laughs> i think if hosetu can figure out how to uh probably be a little bit greater than he is which I, i'm not sure because it's yeah like as good of a form as he's in right now yeah, <laughs> he's got to he's got to be able to figure out that diamond. Uh, he's not the only person, obviously, but uh, yeah, I mean Tristan Mignamba. They have not played against him, so hey, you know it might be something that uh, we might be able to to counteract. But yeah, we have to kind of overload that midfield a little bit, and maybe it's Brooks Lennon doing that. Maybe it's, you know, when he inverted a little bit, uh, I think a few matches ago. But, yeah, it's one of those, like, okay, uh, still, yeah, that diamond midfield is just tough. Like, 
especially away. It, there's just uh, smarter men than I have <laughs> tried to figure out how to play against that. And uh, yeah, I think it's we have to overload the midfield a little bit. We have to even it up, or we play on the counter, in which we've shown, yeah, we're very deadly. Yeah. So Philly will you know. come at us too, so they'll have opportunity to do that. And then Jose Martinez might uh, really man mark uh, Tiago Amada. So yeah, we'll just really have to try to spread Philly pretty wide. And yeah, is that's the thing about a diamond midfield is that there is not a lot of width. So I just hope I way. just hope Philadelphia's <laughs> grass is nice and slick because if you heard Gonzalo Pineda's press conference about why we lost at DC, it's because their grass mm. was heavy. It really kind of just sucked the ball in, and Atlanta yeah. United's used to playing on slick, fast-moving grass. So um, hopefully Philly's grass is nice and you know they got like a like a spray of like olive oil on it or something. <laughs> That's a lot of olive oil, but. Um... <laughs> That's like that's like fat bastard territory of like uh, <laughs> you know whatever you got that he had. Crisco spray going on it, yeah. The Crisco, yeah, whatever it is. But anyway, Gavin, pleasure as always. We'll speak to you soon. Yep, thank you guys a lot for having me on. It's always a pleasure to be on here. Maybe next time, whenever I'm not looking back and forth from a computer screen to a TV screen watching two games at a time, maybe I'll have more thoughts on this. I mean, I did get watched the game. I saw everything, but. I'll probably be like more in depth about everything next time when I'm like full on watching. Oh, it, no worry, you're perfectly match, fine. But exactly, but all yeah, good. It's just, I was doing a lot tonight, so it was just I did I just do what I could. So yeah. it, the only time was probably. Thank you guys so much it. for having me on. Yeah, yeah, no always problem. Great to be here, as the best. All right, take care, friend. See you. See you, man. All right. Uh, <clears throat> is there one more person? That was it. That was four. That was okay. our four for four goals. Okay, okay. Because uh, right. I did. I, I remembered you said somebody else, but. Yeah, Ariel fell moment. asleep again, I believe. That's my theory. Oh, he did? Okay. Alrighty. Well, you know, that's fine. He if does he that. Our good friend Ariel likes to fall asleep. That's um, fair. I, mean, he, I think he's a family man. It makes sense. He works, he's he works, he works a lot. So, um, so let's look a little good. bit in the chat uh, while you get that banana ready, maybe. Um, yeah. Fernandino says Philadelphia, Columbus, and Cincinnati next opponents. Tough opponents, but we can manage seven points, I believe. Baraka says, watch this while doing some homework. Happy to have clinched the playoff spot, but the job is not done. That's correct. Hey, man, you, that's uh, that's very studious of you on a Saturday night. Doing homework, yeah. Wow. Impressed I mean, better student than I was. Seriously, uh, I never did homework on a Saturday night, but more power to you. And hopefully, uh, you know, the degree that you're getting is amazing. <laughs> That's right. Jack says, <laughs> we can all agree we're definitely going in the right direction. Bryant Lee says, hey, guys, was at the game. It was a blast. I bet. I'm jealous. I wasn't able to go. Uh, Jack also says, by the way, what happened to the old goal song? Oh, yeah, that's right. They changed it. Uh, Elliot says, Caleb Wiley love- giving me Reese James vibes. <laughs> opposite side of the uh the pitch obviously but okay i mean yeah we uh we've got 11 goals and 19 assists from our fullbacks this season obviously that's with uh Andrew Goodman as well but that's quite some production i mean that's that's more than some wingers on some teams so yeah well, that's quite good like that's uh that is yeah, I mean, Reese James, uh, okay, I mean, I can maybe see, like, the uh, the goal-scoring ability and whatnot. It's a bit of that, but, yeah, Reese James, he's a unit. So, like, <laughs> as much as I dislike Chelsea, like, Reese James is a good player, so and that's I can what, see it. That's what you'll get out of AJ tonight about Chelsea. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's the... That's the the one superlative that I will say about Chelsea tonight. So, but. so when AJ does a a uh, his his forfeit, which is eating a banana that he doesn't like, um, I'm going to do a parcel because sh- uh, I'm still feeling a little sick. I'm going to do 
a half a shot of, uh, what is this? Tequila as a s- celebration of entering the playoffs, from clinching the playoffs. Because okay, it's been a hot okay. minute, and we back, baby. So cheers. Okay. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, incredibly hard to peel a banana one-handed, but I'm trying. It's uh, kind of doing it. All right, everyone post in the chat your, your banana tech. You know, what you do to peel the banana as best you can, the meta on the banana. That's true, because there are some techers in uh, peeling a banana, because some people peel it from the stem, which makes no sense, you heathens. It's to avoid, like, the butt of the banana at the bottom. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's, like, at the very end, because, really, let's be honest, when you get there, like, if you... If you, you have like you start with the butt up. if you go the other the proper way you're saying so they want to avoid that but that's the thing it's like who cares about the butt at that point apparently like, that's what they do it apparently they care <laughs> like it's not like it tastes different it's just that you uh-huh. see it first yeah no so i mean like, i get it like i don't i don't care but <laughs> apparently that's the that's the thing that's the thought. yeah that doesn't make any sense but Anyway, all right, here we go. Here's a banana. Oh, my God. <laughs> I never met somebody that doesn't like a banana so much. It's a lot of PTSD. Just... Right. It'd be hilarious. You bring that into a therapist's office. Like, I can't have <laughs> anyone. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not like heavy PTSD. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Just why anyway plantains are awesome uh <laughs> little uh little tiny bananas are awesome but, all right stop yeah. delaying all right here we go <laughs> so it's that whole like if anybody knows what misophonia is is that like you know like any sort of like mouth sounds essentially the mastication. I don't have this before, but it's only when I eat bananas. Oh, I guess you. I guess you do have it because it's you have it for that one thing. For that one thing, I guess. But you're you like, know. I I have it for like, if, well, it's not like the sound or whatever, but like I'll, I'll have it like if I like touch a certain kind of material, I'll just be like, eh, I just can't. I don't like the way that feels. It makes me feel weird. Hmm. Yeah. Like what? I, f- I forget what it's called. It's not corduroy, but I don't know. But anyway, I'll sh- I'll figure it out next time. I I remember, like, I find it. I'll be like, oh, this is the thing I was talking about. But I don't, I don't remember. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm curious if there's a, a scientific affliction for it. A name? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you yeah you like really simplified that it was pretty much <laughs> I went like big vocab word and you're like you mean a name <laughs> uh, hilarious anyway um, yeah so that's that's the banana I have no urge to finish it so uh, I won't <laughs> I ate it I, I ate a couple bites and there it is. All right. But, uh, yeah. So let's spin that yeah, Patreon let me, wheel of fortune. Let me get over to that real quick. All right. <clears throat> All right. We're going to go to either me or AJ. Who's going to be for next time? Is it? Is it? Everyone. Everyone's on board for AJ again? Six yep. weeks in a row. It's AJ again. Everyone's on board. We all wanted it, and here we are. We all got it again. So, everyone clap and chat for AJ having, what is it, six times in a row? I feel like you're projecting. Like, (laughs) all everybody wanted AJ. I don't know. I'm just, I just, you know, it just makes sense. Yeah. You're just saying that because I can't read the chat. Sure. Um, All right, here's the... So, we added another one on tonight. Uh, This is going to be listening to a song, you know, like, so that's making a return... Uh, from a couple months ago and we had that on here so maybe we'll see that one i'm still hoping for soccer skills challenge i've never gotten that one that would be fun but 
And if you're a Patreon member, make sure ah. to vote on those new Wheel of Forfeits. Uh, if you are in that tier to be able to vote on it. So make sure you do. We have uh, some exciting new ideas for the Wheel of Forfeit mm -hmm. on those slices. So, yeah, you know, more masochism. <laughs> uh, that word, but whatever. <laughs> masochism. You know what I mean. That's right. Um, so, yeah, the uh, so you get soccer skills challenge this time. Okay. So what are we going to see right. from you, from your repertoire? <laughs> repertoire i guess we'll see i mean maybe it's crossbar challenge maybe it's uh i'm pretty decent at taking penalties ish haven't taken one in a minute but <laughs> yeah so yeah if you we'll guys see. have any ideas post in chat or post in the discord let us know what you guys would want to see in terms of soccer skills challenges and also yeah. if you have any other ideas for uh wheels like he was just saying um you know, let us know on uh, Discord or other places as well. Um, always open to some new ideas for how to inflict or afflict pain to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush my teeth after this. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah. So, guys, that is the live stream. So remember to like, share comment and subscribe if you are new around here yep on our, join us on, on the, the road to 10,000 subscribers everybody we're on yes, the road yes on the road to 10,000 so yes uh tell your mama your papa your cousins your we're telling aunties. everyone out here exactly about the channel give them to subscribe even if they're yeah you know find your your other accounts subscribe to him as well and uh you know help us out to get to ten thousand. but guys thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video i've been aj that's michael adios good night see ya